If you want to hunt bear, whether it be black bear or grizzly, there are a lot of things to think about. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm back with Guy Miner. We've actually both hunted bear. I think your bear count is about four times that of mine, which is just one. But Guy came to me and said, why don't we just cover bear hunting kind of all up? Why not? And bear hunting here in Washington starts August 1st. For us, that's in a month to the day from this recording. Right. So it's on both of our minds. And we thought it might be on your mind. So we're going to talk about the animals themselves, about the equipment, about bullet selection, about rifles, kind of equipment, the whole picture. So why don't we start with the bears themselves? Sure, and I'm gonna talk about black bears in Washington mostly because that's mm -hmm. where I am and yep. I hunt them here. Um, there's about 30,000 black bears in the state of Washington. It's mm -hmm. a healthy, strong population. Mm -hmm. um, and boy, are they widespread through the state. They're on the west side, the central Washington, all yep. the way on the eastern Washington near Idaho, up towards Canada and all the way down towards Oregon. Lots of black bears out there. Yeah, we have them right here. Just saw one the other day walking with my dog. He was coming up the hill. We were coming down. You saw us, and he thought, "Nope." Yeah. Turn around, and you know, it's one of probably five or ten sightings I've had right here on the property. Yeah, and and that's a typical reaction for a black bear. They're not usually looking for trouble. Mm -mm. Um, mm -hmm. So if they see you, they usually, and I keep saying usually because there's exceptions, but they mm -hmm. usually leave. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, they want nothing to do with it. They, they smell you. They're turning around. Yeah. You know, I found a good way to roll up on them literally is with a mountain bike because you're covering terrain fairly quickly you're ultra silent that's how i had a really nice sighting here on the property and i, I carry so i'm not typically too worried so i had a rather alarming sighting do that same thing about 10 or 15 years yeah. ago yeah the mountain bike was utterly silent the bear had no idea it was i didn't know he was there until i came around the corner uh hi bear <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we both went different ways. <laughs> yep, yep. It, it always gets my pulse elevated. I absolutely love encountering wildlife, and bears are kind of at the top of my list. I call them the Cummins Turbo Diesel of the animal world. They are powerful. They can be loud and obnoxious in they the brush. Be. They're fast. They're awesome. They just are. Just like Cummins Turbo Diesel. <laughs> and, and, you know, and you just some of the things you just said there is why I enjoy bear hunting so much there's some spice to it. Oh yeah. You know, the bear is an exciting animal and it, is it always dangerous? No, no, no. Can he be dangerous? Of course he can, mm -hmm. he's very well equipped for it. Oh yeah, yeah. And there's certain situations you specifically want to avoid. Of course, the, the typical sow and cubs and you happen to walk up in the middle of the whole group there, Bad not call. a good place to be. No. Yeah, exactly. That's right up there with petting bison in Yellowstone <laughs> Park. <laughs> So let's talk about bear. They're actually from the pig family. I, I, I found that interesting when I learned that. Yeah, it, it is interesting. It kind of messes with my head because I think there's bears and there's pigs, but mm -hmm. okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and here, you know, here in Washington, Idaho, Oregon, British Columbia, they can be different colors. They're all black bear by species, but right. out here in this Northwest area, we have a lot of, this is considered a chocolate bear. Mm -hmm. There's cinnamon bears, which are a more reddy version of this. There's blonde bears, which are very yellowish. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's your traditional black bears, and they may or may not have a big white mark on them somewhere, usually up on the chest. Mm -hmm. um, they can be very dark. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the one I shot was kind of brown. Yeah. You know, just, chocolate brown in, in, in color. Um, I think this whole uh, trichinosis yeah. thing is, is, is another thing that's really interesting. We have a picture here of that parasite. It's like a little worm blown up from the view under a microscope. Uh, <laughs> here I've been eating black bear meat and I had no idea about this until yesterday when I was talking to one of the guys at SDI about it. Interesting, said, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've known for a long time, I, I like bear meat, it can be delicious, but you have to cook it thoroughly. Mm -hmm. um, and things that I've read is that in some areas of the U.S., 100% of the adult bear population is infected with trichinosis. Mm -hmm. So if you get a bear, your meat's going to have these worms in it, and you need to prepare it thoroughly. Mm -hmm. This is not, so I don't want a rare bear steak. No, no. no. bear sushi is... Not a bear good idea, sushi, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So we're up in the northern part of the United States, and the uh -huh. further north you go, especially into Canada, you're going to get into more and more grizzly population. Oh, right? yeah. And up in Alaska. So let's talk about identifying a grizzly versus a black bear. And, and that's really important because here in Washington, we can shoot, a, we can get an over-the-counter tag for black bear, mm -hmm. and then you can go get a second tag for another black bear. Grizzlies, you can't shoot. You cannot go hunting grizzlies here. Mm -hmm. And they do wander down from Canada. There's some that they think have been up in the North Cascades, uh, over in the Selkirks in the northeast corner. There are grizzlies there. And actually, to hunt those areas, uh, Fish and Wildlife wants you to take a bear ID test online. Oh, wow. Um, that's how concerned they are with us maybe shooting a grizzly. Hmm. And I have had a time when I had to stop a hunter I was with because I wasn't sure if the black bear we were after might be a grizzly. He was big, big strong boar, had a hump on his back, and the way the mm -hmm. light was hitting him, he looked kind of grayish. <laughs> and I'm like, well, not so fast. Let me watch this guy a little longer with my binos. And, and then we determined it was a black bear. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. But that hump typically means grizzly. Typically, the, yes. The tracks have a slightly different profile here, as you can see in this diagram here. Yeah. And then the grizzly is typically larger as well. Right? You could see on that diagram, if you look down at the grizzly one, how far out the points of those claws are hitting the ground. Mm -hmm. now, that's a dead giveaway because the, the black bear paws, their claws curve in much more closely mm -hmm. and the grizzlies are out like this. And gotcha. they could be four or five inches away from the paw. And that's a large set of knives that can do damage when, oh, yeah. they, when yeah. they maul someone. Yeah. And I've heard it's the bacteria that gets into the wound that can be a, one of the biggest complications with a bear incident like that. You might be able to survive physically, but the infection might is, be pretty is sick a huge afterwards. concern. Yeah. yeah. These animals mean business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you want to go bear hunting, what are some of the popular methods? Sure, and there's about four major methods, and here in Washington, we cannot bait for bear, and yet I believe baiting is probably the most common throughout much of the United States. Mm -hmm. You go out there and you, you develop a food source for the bears before season. They get in the habit of visiting that area, you keep replenishing that food, mm -hmm. and and some people have an issue with baiting the bears, but honestly, if you're hunting in thick forest, it's really hard to find the bear. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just go wandering through the forest and find him. He's not going to be there for you. But if you get him coming into a food source, and the advantage as a hunter is you can also be very selective about your bear. Mm -hmm. You know, most of us don't want to take Boo Boo the little cub. Okay, we right. want it. We want to take Yogi or Yogi's dad. <laughs> okay, we want a big old bear. And and so, yeah, you, you can be really selective about that. Also, you can lure the bear in close enough for a good shot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always easier to have good shot placement at modest range. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, you can yep. do that if you've got them coming in 30, 40, 50, 60 yards away. You can, you can pretty well take a look and see what your bear is all about. Yep. And then there's rustling up bears too, right, with dogs? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, people have, uh, there are places where dogs are still used to pursue mm -hmm. bears. I've never done that. Um, it sounds kind of exciting. And what will happen is they'll look for tracks and they'll turn the dogs loose on the tracks. It's nice to see the tracks first because you can tell if you're going after a big bear, which is what most guys want. Um, turn them loose. The bear will eventually either go up a tree or bay on some mm -hmm. rocks and the hunter and the guide go there and kind of corral the dogs and shoot the bear at pretty close range usually. Mm -hmm. So that's a possibility. Um, I don't know if I want to do that or not, but I definitely want to do the baiting someday. Mm -hmm. Calling. <laughs> calling. I had heard that you can call in a bear and I thought, yeah, okay, I'll try that. And so I got my little predator call and I went and mm -hmm. sat down up here in the hills and I started squalling away on that thing, and I had not, two things. One, I didn't really believe I was gonna be able to get a bear in. Mm -hmm. And two, I hadn't left enough of a clear area around me and in front of me. Um, so when what I thought was a mule deer approaching, because I could hear him, I could see some branches move, when he suddenly entered the clearing, there was a bear. Yeah. And let me tell you, they come in with a whole different attitude. Because normally you see a bear and he's out there rooting around and you know, getting uh -huh. the grubs in the logs mm -hmm. and digging up things to eat, mm -hmm. and just being a bear. Mm -hmm. um, this guy was coming in looking for something to kill and eat. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I'm like, 
well, that's interesting. Um, and and you know, that's my first. Literally, attempt. you were playing to catch a predator. Yeah. And he yeah. shows up. And and a predator yeah. showed up. Yeah. And it only took about five minutes with a call. And, and that's crazy. There he was. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And so my adrenaline got going, and I grabbed the old thirty thirty, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm standing there, and I'm I'm looking at the bear. I'm not shooting him because he's smaller than I want. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing he was around two hundred ish pounds, and mm -hmm. I wanted a bigger bear, and I got a bigger bear a week later. Nice. But. Um, yeah, so this guy comes in and he had the attitude and I'm like, all right, I drew a little line in my mind. You mm -hmm. come past that, I'm sorry, you may be smaller than I want, I'm gonna shoot you. Sure. Because I don't want you to come, hello bear, how are you? No, <laughs> right. none no, of no, this. no, no, none of that, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I had a little limit in, in yeah. there and then he backs off and he goes off into the woods and he starts circling around me. I can hear him walking through the forest and the brush hmm. and I said, you know, I don't think I need to be here anymore. Mm -hmm. And got up, threw my pack on, grabbed my rifle, and I headed wow. out. And that first half mile or so, I was headed back to my Jeep. I mm -hmm. was doing a lot of this. Oh yeah. You know, like, yeah. where is that guy? <laughs> and he did not follow me. But that's part of what I like about bear yeah. hunting is that there's some danger. Mule deer don't typically stalk you. No. You know, bears might. Yeah, it all depends on what they're up to, what, the, what they want, yeah. what they don't want. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I've actually uh, heard a couple stories of people being stalked, usually by a large boar, a large mm -hmm. adult male bear. They mm -hmm. were very predatory in nature, mm -hmm. and uh, they know they can hunt things and kill them. Yeah. So be careful. Spot and stalk. Yep. That is what typically we do here in Washington and a lot of other western states because you may not be allowed to do any of these other things that bring the bear in close to you. Yep. So there you go, a little spot and stock, and that's where your binos come in handy. Mm -hmm. Maybe a spotting scope. Get somewhere you've got an advantage, and you can look down, uh, maybe on an old homestead that had an orchard. Mm -hmm. What an attractant comes about September, and that fruit starts ripening. Yep. And the, I've seen as many as seven bears in oh one boy. orchard at the same time. Wow. Um, and and we have orchards here yes. where we're at. Yes. And, and that's definitely an attractor. Uh, in terms of spot and stock, there's also hiking quite a bit. Yes. Looking for sign, whether it be the tracks or the droppings or both, and learning where these bears go. Because, you know, we have a, a creek here, right, in our, our canyon, right? So the bears will come down in the morning and get a drink, maybe, and definitely in the evening they'll come down and go back up to where they're at. So pretty soon, you, they're kind of taking the same path a lot of the time, especially if the, the geography of the canyon funnels them through a particular area, which it does here. And same with cougar actually. And then of course the deer are a little bit more migratory and you know, go here and there or whatever. Uh, but uh, if you see that sign and you see it over and over and it's fresh, you know, you might want to come back at the at that time. Right. You know, for, for us early in the morning and right at dusk. Yep. And you, know? and you could put up game cameras to record time Definitely. and place and all that. Yeah. Yep. You could do that. Um, yeah, if you've got a likely area, watch it. Mm -hmm. Open country, sit on the hillside, glass the slopes. Yeah, there's there's a lot of ways that you can you know happen upon the bear, but you gotta you gotta think it through a little bit. Yes, so. and by the way, glassing the slopes, mm -hmm. every fire blackened stump on that hillside yes. looks like a bear. Yeah, we went we <laughs> went hunting up Lake Chelan one time, yes. and we're cruising in my friend's boat, and oh, there's a black bear. Slow the boat down. Oh no, it's a stump. Another stump. A burnt stump. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. So those are those are the basic uh, methods. And so what about rifle cartridges? Let's talk about different options here. Well, you know, I asked you to put the 243 on there as minimum. <laughs> and honestly, it's a little below where I feel comfortable with for bear. But I was listening to a guy who's really experienced with bear hunting and he likes it because it has so little recoil and he puts that little 100 grain soft point bullet right through their lungs and he says he gets pretty darn quick kills. So he's a surgeon. Precision shot placement. Yeah, and, just and where he wants good it. for him and yeah. uh, I'll, I'll stick with my 30-06 and up. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's fine. Um, 
I think a lot of things in that 30 out six class is where I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have too much recoil. I can control it. I can shoot well with yep. it. Um, it's got a lot of power, a lot of thump. Oh yeah. And I'm talking when I say 30 out six class, I'm talking at your 270, your seven millimeter 08. Mm -hmm. You know, your 280 Remington, 30 out six, of course. 25 think, out things six, in there. maybe. 25. Yeah, I know mm -hmm. a guy who's got several bear with his 25 out six, mm -hmm. and I made me look at my 25 out six, and I said, No, I have a 30 out six. I'll, I'll use yeah. it instead. Yeah. But yeah, I, I could see the 25 out six being very lethal on a bear. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now we don't have it listed. I think the 6.5 PRC would be potentially my choice this year. Oh, absolutely. That thing's got some suds. Yeah, and we've got that MDT HNT 26 ultra lightweight build, you know, that we did. And that thing is just a great all rounder. Easy to carry. This accurate. is not flat country here. This is <laughs> steep country. If you're hunting, you're going to be hiking. You're going to be hiking uphill and downhill, and then uphill and then downhill. And so I'm thinking about an end-to-end -end ultralight hunting package. Now, once you get the bear, things are not ultralight anymore. No, they're you're heavy. Packing. They're yeah, heavy. Yeah, you're, you're packing big time. Yeah. But, you know, I've had plenty of hikes with my rifle rather than actual hunts, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, oftentimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, bringing home game is not necessarily what happens at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, and then the big guns. Mm -hmm. I, for black bear, you don't need a big gun. But what's need got to do with it? Exactly. If you want a big gun, go for mm -hmm. it. Um, I use it to justify my 375 H&H. &H. Mm -hmm. you know, do I need a 375 H&H &H to shoot a bear? No. Mm -hmm. Did it work really well? Mm -hmm. Have yes, I did. towed a 20-foot travel trailer with a Cummins Turbo Diesel? Yes. <laughs> Is it more than I needed? Absolutely. But if you have the tool and the tool is more than enough for the job, I say good deal, unless you're concerned about other implications, like ruining meat or, right. or excessive recoil or, or whatever. So it really depends on what it is that you're doing and, and what your environment is, close range versus long range. You know, you might go with a larger diameter bullet, uh, mm -hmm. larger caliber, and know that you're gonna be close range. That's like my 4570. Yeah. I, I have not taken a bear with it. I would love to, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, you know, I see, I see my 4570 as a modest range hunting rifle. Yep. So quick question for you all. What it, do you think is the optimum cartridge for hunting bear and specify if you're talking about black bear or brown bear? Okay, equipment. So some of the essentials here. Yeah. We need some decent binos. Mm -hmm. uh, I treated myself to these before the grizzly hunt a few years ago, and this Zeiss, and they've been fantastic. And I think they're very much like the binos that you were using earlier yeah. today. Yeah. So some kind of good binos. A spotting scope's also a great idea. I don't have a great spotting scope. <laughs> I've got a range spotting scope. It works okay on the range. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hunt with it. It's yep. too big and dorky and doesn't work well in low light. Mm -hmm. These these work pretty darn well. Along with that some kind of a range finder. Absolutely. I like to know how far away the critter is that I'm trying to yep. shoot. And sometimes out in the hills, you look and is it 250 or 350? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Big difference in bullet drop though. Oh yeah. Depending on the yeah, caliber. You get out there towards 400 yards. Yep. Yeah, grab that. That's the uh, little predator call that <laughs> oh, yeah. I managed to bring the bear in with, uh, which totally surprised me and surprised him. He was looking at me and says, you don't look like a dying rabbit. <laughs> so, <laughs> Let's hear it. Pretty, oh, you want <laughs> yeah. Entertainment on. Annoyance is free. Ultimate courtesy. Reloader. <laughs> so I kept that up for about five minutes, yep. a little louder even. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure enough, a bear showed up. <laughs> and what I've been told, which surprised me, uh, what I've been told is that oftentimes they will keep coming as long as you're calling. Hmm. And once you stop, they may lose interest. Gotcha. So, so you might have a coyote coming in from one end and a bear coming in from the other. This right? is a good thing to do with two people instead of one. Yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> bear hunting in general, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, after the kill, do mm -hmm. we want to get into all that? Yeah. Other mm -hmm. things that we need here. Sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So after the kill, you've got some work out ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And a good skinning knife. This is a Buck Vanguard. I've had it for quite a while. Mm. Uh, skinned a few animals with it, and it works well. It's got a nice wide, flat blade there. Mm -hmm. Perfect for skinning chores, and it's pretty heavy duty. So I like it for that. Mm -hmm. um, then I treated myself to one of these little replaceable scalpel knives. I got one of those for my bear kill, too. Yeah. 
Yeah. And they're really nice for doing some of the delicate areas mm -hmm. if you're going to cape it out. I am no caping specialist. I I take the head to the taxidermist and let him do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it does work well for that and oh my goodness are they sharp. You mm -hmm. know, I'm I'm okay at sharpening a knife. I can't match a, match a scalpel. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, those are great. Yeah. And headlamp. Why? Why headlamp? I'm hunting in the daytime. A lot of times bears don't show up till just about dusk and mm -hmm. your shot is in low light and the sun's going down. You get your bear down. You need some way to find him. And I've done it with a handheld flashlight. Headlamp nope. is way better. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll add on to that when I tell my bear hunting story at the end. <laughs> yeah, good, good piece of gear to have. Yep. Um, game bags, you know, you're gonna, gonna get something. Mm -hmm. You're gonna wind up carrying this thing out probably in your backpack, uh, mm -hmm. which if you've got a good size backpack, you can fit an average size black bear skin and head in one, and then hopefully your buddy will help you out with the meat. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so you can get that done. Bears, eh, they got trichinosis, they got greasy, fatty stuff right under the skin. Mm -hmm. I like making sure I've got some decent rubber gloves with Good me. Good call, yeah. yeah. Those Super are all helpful. things that I like to have. Um, I don't mind having a big bore handgun along either. Because when I'm... I, I insist on having one. When I'm, when I'm field dressing <laughs> the bear yep. and you're all bent over and mm -hmm. your, your intention's focused mm -hmm. on the bear, your rifle's propped up nearby, mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. gun's on you. Yeah. Your, your handgun's yep. on you. Absolutely. And I think it's I think it's well worth carrying. It's a part of my story as well. So I'll I'll, I'll, right. add, I'll add on to that you as well. You go right ahead. <laughs> yep. That's uh, I'm, obviously there's a lot more. You know your camo and if you're gonna do any scent block or anything like that, a whole wide variety of things sure. to think about there. But there's, yeah. There is more. Yep. Um, yeah. I forget what they call those little puff tubes that put a little bit of stuff up in the air and you can see which way the wind is blowing. Oh, nice. Got one of those, but I forgot to bring it today. Huh. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, bullet selection. So we talked about cartridges. You know the different classes, power levels, if you want to think of it as that. But uh, you know, a lot of us hand load or are very particular about the factory ammo that we pick up, and and, and usually it comes down to the bullet, right? Right. I I don't think the cartridge case makes near as much difference as mm -hmm. the quality of bullet that you're using, mm -hmm. and, and all of that is less important than shot placement. Yes, absolutely. But but yeah, I like uh, a bullet that's going to go in one side of the bear and out the other side, two holes mm -hmm. and two big holes if possible. Um, they don't bleed a whole lot externally because their hair and the fat layer just soaks up that blood. So if your bear gets into the forest, into the weeds, um, they're kind of hard to track. Yeah, it's a little bit like ballistics gel. You know, it opens up and then that fat. Yeah, I, I had a horrible time trying to track my bear because there was almost no blood on the ground. Right. So we had to literally s scan a whole area because he ran into the bushes the last couple. He only lived for a couple seconds, but that was enough for him to get away. Right. Yeah. So I like the idea of of the the larger hole, the larger caliber can just you know penetrate in a different way. Uh, the bear is a very tough animal, you know. He knock, is. knocking. Knockdown power, right? Destroying bones, you know, yeah. that type of yeah. capability. Had had one bear that I was going for the heart lung area and I took out his upper arm, if you want to mm. call it that, mm -hmm. broke the bone. Um, he was down and about a second and a half later he was back up and moving. Oh wow. I like I think I need to shoot you again. Yeah. Uh, and that's also, yeah, I like the 30 calibers, you know, the, the 30 cal the 30 out six cartridges I've got here mm -hmm. in front of us, a little with a 200 grain bullet. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I like that for bears. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to do 300 PRC, to be oh. honest. Yeah, great cartridge. It did a good yeah. job on the mule deer that I shot, and that's a less tough animal. I think so. any of those 300 magnums are a great choice for yeah. general western big game. Yeah, a 300 Elk, PRC moose. and a 300 wind mag aren't going to be real different at 200 yards. No. You know, uh, the 300 PRC is really a long range. I, I think of it as up to ELR, right? Uh, but that doesn't mean it's not a good, you know, deer or, or bear rifle right. at closer ranges as well. Because yeah. it's got the right bullet. I kind of right lump all those 300 Magnums in, you know, in one category. Although, they, you know, obviously the 300 WSM is way mm -hmm. different from some of the great big ones. But 300 yeah. Weatherby, yeah. for instance. Yeah, <laughs> Three, that, that 300 or that 3378 Weatherby is... <laughs> monstrous yeah I don't yep. have one of those so um, how about the bullet weight say that you uh, you pick a particular caliber 
like 30 caliber, mm -hmm. you know, and you've got faster, like 155s, you've got heavier, you know, 200 grain. Right. What, what, what are you gonna I'm, choose I'm there? I'm partial to the heavier ones, but there's a lot of caveats with that, depending mm -hmm. a lot as we're gonna get into, you know, bullet construction and, mm -hmm. and what they're made out of. Mm -hmm. Because you may want a lighter, if you're shooting a monolithic, you may want a lighter, faster bullet, because it's gonna penetrate like crazy. Yeah. Just because it's a monolithic bullet. Yep. Um, Good yeah, point. but the weight does have advantages in a tr more traditional type bullet. Mm -hmm. And my nozzler partitions, uh, I've been impressed. I know that they open up rapidly, mm -hmm. and yet they still keep punching through pretty good. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. And others, I, you know, the Barnes, the the new uh, Hornady CX building on their old mm -hmm. GMX, those things are all great. Uh, mm -hmm. I do tend to look for the heavier weight bullets. There's just more mass there. Yeah. Now, if you're hand loading or even if you're selecting off the shelf ammo, you do need to think about velocity, right? Uh, both just purely with bullet expansion in general. And then also if, if there's any long range hunting, you know, in context there, your trajectory and are you gonna do 200 yard zero, right? It's gonna be an inch high at 100 and it's gonna have a little bit less drop, you know, at further ranges. Good good compromise essentially yeah you know yeah yeah you can get that thing where it's gonna work for you out to however far you're comfortable shooting your hunting rifle at a game animal mm -hmm. which for me 300 is okay 400 is about my personal cutoff mm -hmm. with my standard hunting rifles yeah so. yeah I, with some of my rifles I would take things to 600 easily especially from prone mm -hmm. but I've got to have a good solid shooting position otherwise yeah. Not a chance. And I know there's guys who can shoot things twice as far, no problem. Yeah. I'm not that guy. Right. So. Make sure you're confident, obviously. So how about the construction of the materials, right? We've got solid copper bullets. We've got lead core bullets. We've got bonded bullets, you know, all, all these different construction details. And, and you can't assume just because something has a plastic tip on it, that it's going to be either a rapid expansion bullet mm -hmm. or a slow expansion. You can't just assume that. Uh, all kinds of stuff have plastic tip bullets. Mm -hmm. um, the CX doesn't look that much different from the ELDX in right. the Hornady's lineup. The CX has got those grooves around it, but you know if you don't take a look and see mm -hmm. what you've got there, oh, well the CX doesn't open up a lot penetrates mm -hmm. like crazy. ELDX opens up much wider, still penetrates good. Mm -hmm. um, that's just an example there. And then the Nosler ballistic tips, boy, they got a, they got a uh, rough reputation 25, 30 years ago that's still kind of following them around and it shouldn't because Nosler improved the heck out of those bullets over the years. Mm -hmm. And I've actually taken bear with them mm -hmm. so, and elk. So nice. they've really changed those bullets up. But sometimes you're not even gonna have a choice no. depending on what state you're in and what regulations you're under, you might be in a solid copper scenario, and then you have to choose CX, TTSX, and right. you know those different options. Yeah, yeah. There's and that's that's really important. Uh, and some of those bullets have different expansion characteristics. Mm -hmm. uh, the Barnes is pure copper. That mm -hmm. works different from the harder copper zinc alloy of some others. Yeah. So take it all into consideration, take a look at the kind of velocity your rifle can develop. Mm -hmm. Seven mag is faster than a 30 six is faster than other things, you know. And, and if you've got a hard bullet, you wanna drive it real fast to get that expansion. Yeah, solid copper bullets need to go fast. They do, it, right. and, and it's a great combination. Not like this is a new concept. Solid copper's been mm -hmm. around for quite a while now, mm -hmm. um, and they keep improving these bullets and doing better and better. Mm -hmm. uh, very impressive, so mm -hmm. a little bit lighter bullet, uh, a little faster velocity and they work really well. Yeah, good stuff. So let's talk about shot placement, right? Because <laughs> we've discussed all these other variables, but if you don't have good shot placement, it all doesn't matter, right? It really doesn't, yeah. 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 Uh, you don't want to gut shot anything, but <laughs> no. you don't want to gut shot bear. Uh, no, heart lungs, go for the heart and lungs and that's gonna get you your bear. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so think about that, where the heart and lungs are, are located in a bear. I like to go follow that front leg up, go about a third of the way up in the body, mm -hmm. let them have it. Yep, and, and that, that looks like the perfect you know, placement based on this diagram we've got here from yeah. bowhuntered.com. <laughs> and, and if you, yeah, you take out both lungs or lung and heart, um, yeah, you're good, mm -hmm. you're good. I have heard horror stories about a guy shooting at an angle and clipping one lung on a bear mm. and 
hours of follow-up and the bear yeah because the bear is such a tough animal with one lung he's like i'm gonna just keep going right yeah <laughs> and, and loping away faster mm -hmm. than the hunter can mm -hmm. follow mm -hmm. so gaining ground so i don't want to do that uh, yeah d d uh, an animal being wasted like that is in and the pain and suffering right this is about humane hunting right, right? we're going to take the animal down we're going to put it down as quickly as possible mm -hmm. you know so there's not suffering so it doesn't get away and then that animal goes to waste yeah so that's a good that's a good overall placement strategy like you're saying working your way up the lane long going a third of the way up now how do you feel about head on tail tail direction angles that kind of thing tail on uh, I, I don't want anything to do with that shot if I don't <laughs> if I don't have to now if I've got a wounded bear and it's getting away from me mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm going to hit him again as soon as I can. Yeah. And there's a really good chance of breaking his spine with that shot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, think gotcha. about that. Make that your objective. And then, you, then you've dropped your bear. He's there. He may still mm -hmm. need a kill shot to go up, but you've dropped him in place. Mm -hmm. The frontal shot, um, I don't really like. Their heads usually cover up a lot of their chest mm -hmm. when they're walking towards you. Um, if you're okay with the head shot, mind you, the bear's brain... As smart, smart as they are, is not the biggest thing. I mean, look at this little skull over here. Yeah. There's, a, there's not a lot of room in there for a big brain. Um, doesn't mean they're not smart. Just means yeah. that you know, there's, it's kind of a small target. Mm -hmm. And I've heard stories, true or not, I don't know, of that sloped head of the bear being able to bounce a bullet off. Mm -hmm. um, and, that, and the skull being incredibly yeah. impenetrable, right? And, that, and that, that doesn't sound like a good scenario mm -hmm. to me. So... If I had to take that shot because the bear's coming at me, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Yeah. Take him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to wait for him to be chewing on my leg and no. then try to shoot him. No, this this bit's bad. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> so. Okay, so based on all that, that, that covers kind of a lot of the considerations. Tell me about the bears that you've taken. Yeah, let's maybe focus on one. Sure, uh, one yeah. Hunt. yeah. You tell one, um, I'll tell my one. <laughs> yeah, and, and then we're good. Yeah. Sure. So... Uh, bear hunt. Uh, this one was in 2016, and I was using this rifle. I had a different scope. I had a two mm -hmm. to seven scope on. This is a 30 out six Remington 700, and that year I was all kinds of excited about my 165 grain Nosler ballistic tip at 2,940 feet per second. Nice, great load, and, and that was the year that I took bear, deer, antelope, elk, all with the same rifle, all with the same load. Worked mm -hmm. fantastic. So. I'm up bear hunting with a couple of my buddies here in eastern Washington, and we have seen where a bear was feeding, but the brush was so thick we couldn't see the bear. You could mm -hmm. see brush mm -hmm. moving a little bit, mm -hmm. and so you know you're watching a bear because that's what's in this area. And sure enough, like you talked earlier, there was a time during the day he went down to, to get to the creek, mm -hmm. and he wanted to drink. It was fairly warm. It was early September, mm -hmm. and so we waited around and waited around, and there was a clearing over there across the canyon about 325 yards away. Now, there was no way for me to go prone. It just mm -hmm. wasn't going to work on the geography. It was As is frequently the case when yep. you're hunting around mm -hmm. here. <laughs> yep. We were sitting on some rocks, and I said, mm -hmm. fine, I'll just stay sitting on the rocks. And the good old Marine Corps had taught me how to use a sling to stabilize the rifle, mm -hmm. so I wrapped my arm through there and waited and waited. And sure enough, pretty soon, you can see the brushes mm -hmm. moving as he's coming back up. Wait for him to come out in that opening. And he turned away just a little bit, so I got kind of a quartering away shot at him. Mm -hmm. caught, him in the, caught him in the ribs, on up through here, and bullet exited, leaving the jacket behind in oh, his wow. offside hide. Yeah. But the core exited, and uh, yeah, and he made it maybe 10 or 12 yards and yeah. collapsed. Mm -hmm. and he was done. Mm -hmm. um, Good-sized bear. We go down to uh, to go get him, and uh, that was that was fun. We had a brand new bear hunter with us, and it was like, whoa, you know, this <laughs> is pretty cool. And it was cool, you know. And oh, could hear that bullet hit too. Mm -hmm. And I lost him in recoil, boom, and mm -hmm. I, I couldn't I mm -hmm. couldn't see. And I come back down, and I'm like, where'd he go? You know, mm -hmm. and they say, oh, you got him, guy. Don't worry, you got him. <laughs> okay, good. Glad you know that. And yeah. We go find him, no problem. And then the taking apart the bear scenario happens, mm -hmm. and we took him apart, and with three of us to get him back up to the truck, mm -hmm. that was not too bad. But yeah. I tell you, a bear hide and skull can weigh a lot. Oh yeah, that's an awesome story. <laughs> that was it, it. Was it was it was a good hunt. It was a really good. We yeah. got we got two bears on that hunt. And uh, I'm real happy with him. That's awesome. So, 
How yeah. about your bear? So I was right near here on a neighbor's property, uh, right here in the canyon. And uh, we had gone up to the hillside. We were sitting on the hillside. And this was a place where bears would be funneled up through a particular channel in the valley. And again, it was dusk. We were sitting on the hillside. We had given up on the hunt. And we're watching some YouTube videos <laughs> on my friend's phone. Watching and Ultimate Reloader? No, it was some diesel <laughs> stuff, I think, or something like that. And uh, we hear this cracking sound. And I look, and there he is. He's just walking up the hill. And I knew I only had seconds. Yes. You know, I had probably 30 seconds total window before the spare was going to be up into the bushes again. He came out of these bushes, and he was going up to those bushes. So I was sitting on the hillside. I had sticks, Good. which is a, a way that I really like to hunt. Now I have like the MDT triple pole, you know, and the lightweight double pole that mm -hmm. could kind of essentially do the same thing. But I like to be seated in, around here, you're going to frequently shoot down into a bowl. Yes. It's just a, a very common scenario, you know. So I was sitting on the hillside and I forgot to dial my parallax. So the bear was not crystal clear through the scope, but it was only about 160 yards or so, something like that. And I was tracking him and tracking him and took the shot. He, was, he had just come up out of the bushes. He, uh, so I, I've heard if a bear thinks it's going to live, it's going to go uphill. If it thinks it's going to die, it goes downhill. And it just turned around and ran right back down into the bushes. It was about equidistant either way. And so we heard for probably five seconds or so some crackling in the bush. And we thought, He's right down there. Let's go get him, right? And it was really late in the day. That's why we gave up on the hunt for the day is it was getting dark, but it wasn't legal, you know, ending, right. ending day kind of thing. Um, so it really quickly got dark. We went down to the bushes and we found a network of essentially tunnels that these bears had burrowed through the dense brush. It gets really spooky going through a bear tunnel. Yep, it really does. And before that, we went up to where the bear was shot. No blood. I mean, I saw he was next to a tree, you know, where he where I impacted him. Six five Creedmoor, I think it was my Ruger Precision rifle, mm -hmm. you know, one forty three ELDX uh, bullet. I had loaded the ammo, you know, and so we went all around this network of bushes. Finally, it's dark. I have a headlamp on. I have my forty four Magnum, which is just like this one, except it's a four inch, and literally. I'm on my hands and knees crawling through this bear tunnel and I've got my, all I can see is right in front of me. It was so exciting. Yes. It, my, my heart rate was just really going because I didn't know if I was going to stumble upon an angry, pissed off, almost dead bear with enough oh, yeah. left in him to, to yeah. give it to me. And so that went on for about an hour. It was, it was such a lengthy process. And finally I saw this hump of brown fur and I went over to it, and it's the weirdest thing, isn't it? You never really get to touch a bear. Not in wildlife, unless you're Timothy Treadwell. And that <laughs> that did didn't not work end, out well. It did not end up well for him. So I put my hand on it. The bear was still really warm. And it's just so weird to touch an animal that you literally can never touch. You know? Right. And right. to be right there next to it, I was, I was a little spooked out, you know, thinking it might come to life or something. Well, yeah. You know, and, and you got to mm -hmm. be careful of that. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's what I when I tell people that I like the spice of bear hunting. Yep. I'm not talking about the food. I'm talking about the adventure, <laughs> you know, because it's it does it get it gets oh, the yeah. adrenaline flowing. And I know more than once hunting when there's been a bear that made it into the brush like yep. that, and and you start to go in after it, and you stop and you think, yeah, I uh, I took vacation days to do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, this is not a white tail. Yeah. Okay. So, so you were just talking about when we did the X model, uh, the fact that it has a forward pick rail on the fore end, that being a handy option for putting a light on there. Yes. And, and going back to this scenario, if I had my 3030 and it had a light on the front of it, I could have used that. You know, in the confines of, the, of a tunnel on my hands and knees, that would have been a little bit difficult. But in a general, you know, reactive environment like that, that could be a very handy thing to have I a think light it'd be, like that. I think it'd be real handy. Yeah, you know, and obviously. then if the bear jumps out, boom, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, our, our, our fears get exaggerated. You know, men and bears mm -hmm. have been hunting each other ever since there have been men and bears. Mm -hmm. And our fear of the bear, I think, is something deep within mm -hmm. because they're bears. 
man versus nature. It's one of the yeah. one of the principal story types, right? Yeah. Man versus man, man versus nature, and and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So there, were, for me, there were three parts of the hunt: finding and shooting the bear, right? Or yeah, spotting him and shooting him, and then tracking him down, and then there was getting him down the mountain. So this uh -huh. was good. We were up, the the canyon floor was down, and so the neighbor came up and he called up his kid and the kid's friend and all that, and he took off, he took off his belt and wrapped it around the bear's rear leg. And, and so we had this, this handle essentially, and someone else was on the front and drugged the bear all the way down the canyon. Someone had backed a truck up to the orchard. Nice. And put him in there. There was two bears in there because someone else had shot a bear further up the canyon. So I got to learn bear surgery that night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they, this, if you haven't shot a bear, if you haven't skinned out a bear, they can be, so greasy. Uh, oh yeah. I swear my boots had extra waterproofing on them for mm -hmm. a month afterwards <laughs> because of the bear fat that got on my boots while yeah. I've you know been doing this some of the skinning. And and your hands are you know, they're just they're just covered in this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that's another reason I like the, the little rubber yeah. gloves, protect the hands a little bit. Yeah. It's it's an interesting hunt and they are, you know, if you get a decent sized bear, it's it's a great big thing to have to move. Downhill is. is way better than uphill. Oh yeah. Yeah, but you know what? It was worth it. And this bear was, you can see in this picture, it was a smaller bear, but that turned out to be a real advantage because when I cut up the back straps and bar oh. barbecued them the next morning with my eggs, which you can see here in this picture, it was literally the best meat I've ever had. It was so clean and it was nice and lean, but it had enough fat on it just to you know give it that well-rounded, really beautiful taste actually. So yeah. I, I've heard horror stories about bears being really, really gamey, and this one was not. I think know? a lot of it depends on uh, what they're eating, mm -hmm. and also I wouldn't be too surprised if some of the older males, they may be stinky, like you know, older males are stinky. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. But but yeah, and bear meat. I had a a butcher describe to me says, you gotta always take the back straps because they can be the best pork chops you've ever had hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. And the, from the bear back straps I've had, I would yeah. agree with that. Yeah, They're absolutely. Excellent meat. Wonderful. I like to shoot them uh, in the fall here when we mm -hmm. have the berry crops and they're feeding mm -hmm. on those berries a mm -hmm. lot. It's a good, clean food source for them. And yeah. sometimes the meat seems to take on a little bit of a sweet flavor. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. A dark, <laughs> deep red meat. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the hams can, my goodness, you can get a roast out of those. Mm -hmm. So nice. Well, there's our thoughts on bear hunting and there's our bear hunting stories. The question for you all is, what specifically do you use for bear hunting? What caliber, what cartridge, what rifle, what gear? And do you have a cool bear kill story to tell? Drop a comment, share your feedback, and we'll start a discussion. Thank you, Guy, for putting this all together. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. fun. And in a month, maybe we'll be back at it together. <laughs> That would be great. <laughs> that concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting. Thank you.